Hello, my name is Brianna and I'm a developer relations engineer working on health and fitness. Hi, my name is Garen. I'm also a developer relations engineer on the same team as Brianna. Today, we're going to walk through some best practices for developing apps that incorporate the benefits of both health services and Health Connect to create the optimal experience for your users. When it comes to Android's health APIs, a question we often get is what's the difference between Health Connect and health services? So I'll answer that now. Health Connect is an API and platform for storing and sharing health and fitness data between apps on the phone. Health Services is an API for watches running Wear OS 3 or higher. It configures the various on-device sensors and algorithms for easy developer use. We also recently released the Health Services beta, which introduces a number of improvements to the functionality and convenience of Health Services. So, in many health and fitness scenarios, taking the sensor data collected using health services and sharing it via Health Connect will be a very common journey. So over the next 20 minutes, we'll show you how to do this. We'll start with an overview of each API, then we'll look at a practical example of health services and Health Connect combined, and finally, cover some building blocks you'll need to use them together. Thanks, Bill. Let's start with Health Connect. Think about your favorite mobile fitness app. Slightly, this app has got direct integration with a bunch of separate apps like Step Tracker or a social platform or maybe a nutrition app. This helps paint a clearer picture of your overall health. For example, understanding how well you slept last night can help you anticipate how you might perform today. This is the purpose of Health Connect, to give users an easy way to share data between their chosen health and fitness apps. Health Connect is device-centric, meaning data is stored directly on the user's phone, and it's supported by devices with an Android SDK of 28 or higher. Health Connect also offers users a centralized place for permissions and granular control over read and write access for each data type an app interacts with. If you're already developing fitness apps, you may be familiar with Google Fit Android API, which has now been deprecated and will be supported through to the end of 2024. We'd encourage you to migrate apps to using Health Connect before then to continue sharing data. OK, so let's take a quick look at how to get set up with Health Connect. To get started, simply add the Health Connect dependency to your build file, and then you're going to modify your manifest to account for the app's use of permissions. That's here. And finally, its use of Health Connect client. Then you're going to declare the Health Connect data type permissions. So you declare the permissions here, and then later in your app, you request the permissions. So here, we're specifying we're going to read and write heart rate data and steps data. Remember, health data, health data is sensitive, so you should only ever request permissions that your app needs. So the final step is simply to request your Health Connect client instance, and that's all it takes to get set up. OK, so we're set up now, but how do we actually read and write data? Here's a simple example that represents the user's step count for a given time period. The thing to note here is the use of the steps record class. And once we've created that object, we can simply insert it into Health Connect. Another example here, looking at reading data. Note in this case, the use of read records, specifying the data type required and the time frame. As you can see, this is an improvement over writing one-off direct integrations with every other app. You only have to write this once, and then you're able to read, write, and aggregate data over 50 different data types from a growing number of health and fitness apps. Cool. So now to health services. Health services provides apps with high-quality health and fitness data through access to sensors and related algorithms. And by taking advantage of modern smartwatch architecture, it can do this in a way that consumes less power than alternative APIs. Health Services has three clients, Exercise Client, Measure Client, and Passive Monitoring Client. So Exercise Client is for workout metrics like distance, heart rate, and speed. It also gives developers aggregates like average heart rate and max pace, all built in. 
Measure client is for short-lived rapid sampling. And depending on the capabilities of the device, you can use measure client to measure things like heart rate or even blood oxygen levels. And passive monitoring client offers a way to collect all day metrics like step count to contribute to things like daily goals. And one of the major development benefits over alternative APIs is that with health services, you write your app only once and the API adapts it to differences in watch hardware. So this is a list of just a few of the data and exercise types that health services supports. And I want to emphasize that this list is not exhaustive at all. So I encourage you to check out the documentation after the talk just to see all the options that are available to you. I'll just read out a few now, though. So you have data types like heart rate, distance, swimming lap count, exercise types like skiing, deadlift, meditation, boxing, which I included because it's one of my favorites. And now that we've looked at some of the data and exercise types that are available through health services, let's look at an example of how you would use health services to record a running workout along with some associated metrics. We'll choose distance, heart rate, and total calories. First, we check to make sure the device has the appropriate capabilities to support this exercise. Now, why is this important? If you advertise your app as tracking a particular workout or metric, then your users will be expecting this functionality. But as I mentioned before, not every app, every device, has the same capabilities. And these sometimes even change with software updates, which is why you should query the capabilities on startup. Next, we'll register for exercise updates. Health services provides updates on exercise state, meaning if the exercise is active, paused, or ended. And in health services beta, which we recently released, in addition to knowing that an exercise is in an ended state, you can also understand why. So this can be something like um, the user ended the workout or permissions were lost, in addition to a whole host of other reasons. And this gives you control over how your app responds to this ended exercise. Health services also packages up the latest metrics and the active duration of the workout. Finally, to start the exercise, we'll build our exercise config with the exercise type and the associated metrics that we want to capture. As you can see, configuring an exercise only takes a few lines of code, and health services takes care of adapting this across devices and supports more than 80 exercises. Thanks, Brian. OK, now that we've covered these two APIs, let's take a look at a possible fitness journey that could use both. OK, so you leave home uh, and leave your phone at home, and you start to run on your brand new Pixel watch. <laughs> okay. uh, using your favorite running app. OK, so as soon as you set off, health services starts collecting uh, distance, heart rate, steps, elevation, location, a whole bunch of metrics that it's going to cache locally on the watch. And throughout your run, you're going to be glancing at your watch, just checking that your pace is in the right zone, heart rate is where you want it to be, etc. And whilst you're, not, whilst you're not looking at the watch screen, the app is going to be using health services uh, to continue collecting that data by using a foreground service. So you arrive back at your house, um, and you end the workout. At this point, the app uses Work Manager to upload the data to its server. Waiting to the end of the workout to upload the data minimizes the watch's power consumption. After a bit of light stretching, you pick up your phone and you navigate to the run running app's mobile app to view your post-run analysis. And here, the app writes the running session to Health Connect so that other apps can read the workout data. Along with the exercise session, so the fact that you did a running exercise, it's going to write steps, elevation, distance, speed, active calories, etc. And you decide to share it on your running social media. And as the run's already been read back from Health Connect, it's ready to be published when you want. You then open up your nutrition app, which has also read the run from Health Connect, and you view your updated calorific intake and plan your post-run fuel. Finally, as you settle into the couch, you reopen your, your favorite running app and see that the hydration you logged in the nutrition app is also rendered on the watch app. So this journey I just laid out is a very common one. Perhaps you even followed it to a T this morning before you came to the venue. The important thing to note here is that it involves multiple devices. 
Imagine running with only your smartphone and using your pulse as a proxy for your heart rate, or squinting at your watch trying to input nutrition data. Pre-Health Connect, this journey would have involved multiple direct integrations and a lot more code. But on Android, you can make this journey seamless for your users by using Health Connect and health services together. OK, so putting it all together. Even though at the moment there isn't a direct connection between Health Connect and health services, there are a few ways you can pass data between the two. So the first option available to you is to use the wearable data layer, which provides a communication channel uh, for apps and is part of Google Play services. You can use the API's data client to transfer data from the watch to the phone and back again. However, the data layer API can only synchronize data with Android devices and Wear OS watches. So that means if your Wear OS device is paired with a phone running iOS, the data layer API won't work. And so for this reason, we recommend a second option, which is to build your Wear app to communicate directly with the internet if you don't need a persistent connection between the two devices, that is. So from there, simply upload your data to the cloud. For this, you should use Work Manager to ensure that the data is packaged and uploaded at the end of the workout. It's really important for health and fitness use cases that you can't always assume the user has a stable internet connection, for example, if they're out on a hike or something like that. Okay? Once the data is available in your phone app, then you can just write it to Health Connect. Thanks. So an important point to note with both options is that currently, due to Health Connect's restrictions on background reads, your phone app will only be able to read data back from Health Connect and therefore pass it on to the Watch app after the user has interacted with your phone app in the foreground. Of course, we're always looking for ways to improve the developer experience, and these restrictions may change in the future, so stay tuned for updates in that space. With all this in mind, let's revisit the example that Garen shared earlier in the talk. All of the in-work activity is recorded using Health Services' exercise client. When the exercise state changes to ended, Work Manager helps package the data and uploads it to the app server using the Pixel Watch's LTE connection. From here, once the data is available in the mobile app, the app's Health Connect integration takes care of writing that workout data to Health Connect. Then, once we open our social media app, it reads the run now that the app is in the foreground. And the same is true for the nutrition app. Finally, the newly acquired hydration data from our nutrition app is passed from the app's backend to the watch using a Wi-Fi connection. I'd also like to touch on a few things that you should keep in mind when developing apps that use both health APIs. First, your app should make sure to account for differences in data formatting across the two platforms. The data that you receive back from health services might not be in the right form to immediately send to Health Connect and vice versa. So spend time testing your implementation to make sure the UX feels consistent. Second, your app experience should account for latency from uploading data via the network to Health Connect and back. Finally, consider using Jetpack Compose for Wear OS to develop your apps and for mobile to develop your phone app. And, uh, Compose is Android's modern toolkit for building native UI and makes it you can do more with less code accelerating development. So in addition to using the latest version of Compose for Wear OS, make sure that you're using up-to-date Jetpack libraries across your watch and phone apps. And that's it. We're very excited about how quickly the Android health ecosystem is evolving, so please stay tuned for more updates from our team. And if you're interested in learning more about building health and fitness apps on Android, please check out the other ADS health and fitness talks. There's one on testing health services apps, as well as one on keeping your apps data synced with Health Connect. And of course, review our docs and samples. Thank you. Thank you.